students, how are you? I hope you are doing fine. Let's start a new topic today in science. Can you please open your science textbook, page number 48. And also please keep a rough copy and a pencil in handy. So now we are ready for the class. Today we are going to learn about plants and animals. So I have two questions for you. Are you ready to answer? Great. My first question is, do you love plant and animals? Do you love plant and animals? Yes or no? Yes? That's great. You deserve a star. Now, let's move to the next question. If you have seen plants and animals, can you tell me where have you seen them or found them? Think, think, think. Okay, I can help you. I have found them at home. So, that shows that plants and animals can be found everywhere. So, what lesson are we learning today? We are learning plants and animals around the school. around the school. So today's lesson we are only going to learn plants and animals around the school. Now as you told me that plants and animals are found everywhere can you also give me some few more examples. Where can I find them? Let me help you. I have seen some animals and plants in water, maybe rivers, sea, and I have also seen plants like cactus, and animals like camel on land. So what does this look like? This looks like a desert. So this is a desert. Now finally, we, are, we can also see some plants and uh, see we can, sorry, we can also see some animals or insects flying in the air. They spend most of their time flying in the air like butterflies. Great. So I hope we are in the same page. We both know that we can find plants and animals in rivers, seas, that is the water, and we can also find plants and animals in land and few we can also see them mostly flying in the air. Now what does this show? This shows that
that we find plants and animals everywhere, almost everywhere. So, what is it called? There is a one word for everything. The place, the place where we find the plant and animal is called a habitat. So, wherever we find and also the human beings, we stay in the house. Since humans also, according to science, humans also are a part of the animal group, so we all are part of habitat. So the place, I repeat, the place where plants and animals live is called a habitat. What is a habitat? The place where a plant or animal lives is called a habitat. Repeat after me. The place where a plant and animal or animal lives is called its habitat. Animals live in places where they can find food, water and shelter. So animals can live where they find food, water and, and shelter. What about the plants? The plants also as they are living things just like animals the plants also need air and light to survive. Now since we are also talking about plants right now I want to first introduce plant habitat. The plant habitat as we know we can always see the grass in the garden. Have you seen plants around your house? Have you been to a beautiful garden? Have you seen beautiful gardens around Cornish? Do you really like them? Do you think they are soothing to your eyes on a weekend or a nice outing? Yes? Okay. So, as you told me that you love plants and animals, I want to start with plant habitat. Now, as I told you, habitat is a place where plant or animal lives. It's called a habitat. Now, we are going to start introducing plant habitat. We are going to introduce plant habitat. Now, I am sure even in school or in your surroundings, near your surroundings, you must have seen small grass, small plants in the shape maybe it resembles something like this. It must be on a ground in our playground or near a cornish, anywhere where you can see a patch of green, it must be small plants. So what are these called? These are called as grass. You must have also seen tiny, even more tiny plants on the walls. You can find some really tiny plants on the walls. And also, you can find some tiny plants on the trees, on the trunk of the trees. Now, if this is the trunk, you can find some tiny plants on the trunk of the trees and also on the cracks of the concrete on the cracks of the concrete so let me summarize this for you as we know that a place where animal or plant live is called as a habitat now as we move to the plant habitat 
we have seen small plants which are called as grass on a lawn. Usually you find grass on a lawn or in the garden. So other plants also grow among the grass. It's not just grass alone. You will also find some other plants growing along with the grass. And also, like I said, you find even more tinier plants, tiny plants growing on the walls, on the trunk of the trees and on the concrete. These pictures will be more shown in the video as we proceed. You will see more pictures. So you, it's more, uh, you, can, you can easily recognize, it's more acceptable for you to understand that these tiny plants can grow on the walls and of walls, trunks of the trees and also on the cracks of the concrete. I hope you have understood till now. Now let's move as we finish the plant habitat which is the next group of living things. Can you guess? Yes, animal habitat. Now as I'm going to the animal habitat, <coughs> we know that the animals need food, water and shelter. Even human beings, as a human being, even I need food, water or shelter to survive in this world. So as I move to the animal habitat, if I ask you to name some animals, can you please think of some animals around your surroundings or you must have visited a place, maybe a safari or maybe a zoo where you must have seen some animals. Can you please write down this in your paper on the piece of paper which you have with you? Make a list of all the animals you must have seen um, around your surroundings. Great, I'm sure you're trying there. I really appreciate that you're giving your best. I can also help you, even I want to list down some animals which I have seen. Maybe it can help, uh, maybe it can relate with what you are writing there on the paper. So, let me start with some very small animals. You know, there are some really small animals I, I have seen. And if these animals are not, if you have not written this on your paper, it's absolutely okay. What I wanted to see, what I want to know is that do you know a lot of animals and plants? Do you also know some plants? If you, may, if you know some name of plants and trees, you can also write it down just below the animals. You can just make, you can make a note like animal, animal habitat. You can make a note of animals and maybe plants. You can just write the name of plants. Name of plant. You can write it down neatly on your piece of paper. And uh, let me begin with small animals. Small animals like slugs, snails, wood lice. Okay, if you are not aware of this, small animals, today you have learned some new animals like slugs, snails and wood lice. Now you must be thinking, how do they look like? I know the names of the small animals, slugs, snails, wood lice. I will be sharing few pictures in this video so that you can identify the small animals. Now you would be wondering where do these animals live? I haven't seen them. I don't see them every day. Where do these live? They live under these animals live under stones or heaps 
of rotting leaves you know what is rotting leaves rotting leaves are the ones which are decaying decaying is uh, the leaves which have fallen down from the plants or trees and which have no life anymore and they are just getting back into the soil so the rotting leaves so you can also find these kind of small animals repeat after me slugs snails wood lice you can find the small animals they live in stones on the stones and maybe on the heaps of rotting leaves heaps means heaps can be too many heaps of rotting leaves okay so these are heaps of rotting leaves leaves now these animals you don't see them on uh, in the day uh, in the daylight on uh, your everyday basis because they always prefer they like to stay in a place which is dark and damp they like or they stay in dark and damp place damp means wet dark or damp places so i hope you know that we are right now paying attention on the animal habitat and i taught you some new animals today and if you already knew about it thumbs up so we have learned some new world animals that slugs snails wood lice who live on the stones or heaps of rotting leaves leaves now these they live on these because it is dark or it can be a dark damp place a damp place is a wet place so they prefer a dark and a damp place that's why you find them somewhere near the rotting leaves which is dark and wet because the leaves now you might be asking why the leaves is rotten and why it would be damp so because the leaves uh, get mixed into the soil if there is water it can be wet and now i would also want want you to know some new animals some more animals which you can learn for today apart from slugs snails and wood lice is you must have seen this wriggly kind of insects uh, in, in wriggly kind of worms you know you usually find them in the soil what are they called as earthworms so if you actually dig inside the soil maybe a wet soil preferably you can find these earthworms there they like to eat they love rotting leaves they like to eat rotting leaves rotting leaves they love to eat the rotting leaves okay and then uh let's move to another animal moles all these animals the pictures will be shared along with this video so you can identify them better okay so moles also live in a large holes they live in large holes now which large holes do they live they live in the large holes in the soil in the soil so moles are basically they live under the ground they are underground animals so and they like to eat earthworms moles live 
in large holes in the soil and they also eat earthworms. So moles like to eat earthworms. They eat earthworms. Okay, so I hope you have understood today's lesson. I would like to summarize this lesson once again. Just a five quick, a quick ending up of this lesson. So you know what we have done today for this class. Okay. Now by the time I am erasing the board, I want you to quickly write down if you have already finished the names of animals and plants. I also want you to uh, think of more plants and animals, you know, in the desert. Or a habitat can be a desert habitat or it can be a sea or ocean habitat. The place where they are staying, we name them along with that habitat. Okay? So, for example, if I say, if I say a frog, a frog stays, it can stay near the pond. So, a frog, frog is in the pond habitat. Okay? So I just want you to quickly listen to me a five minute summary of what we studied today in science. So basically, as we know, we find plants and animals everywhere, almost everywhere in the world. We find them. So the place where we find the plants and animals is called a habitat. The place where a plant or animal live is called habitat. Plants and animals live is called a habitat. Okay? Easy? And then we studied plant habitat where we saw in the plant habitat we saw small plants like grass and also I told you that we find tiny plants on the walls, on the trunk of the trees. and on the cracks of the component which the pictures are already shared along with the video. Next, after we finish studying about the plants, we move to the animal habitats. As we finish the plant habitat, I hope you understood plant habitat. Okay, and now we move to the animal habitat. Animal habitat, I'm sure you must have written down the names of some animals. I think you will guess. I think you must have written a dog, a cat, a honeybee, a butterfly, a camel, a mouse. Yes? Great. Now, as we already know these everyday animals, we also learned the new words, some new animals like slugs, wood lice, snails, earthworms, We see the butterfly beautifully flying in the air. It, make, mashallah, it makes the sky looks, the, the air looks so beautiful, the surroundings so beautiful. Now, as we know the everyday animals which we regularly see, sometimes we own them as pets as well. Do you have, do you have any pets? 
Do you take care of them? Do you love them? Great. Now, as we know these animals, we already also learnt new animals today like slugs, wood lice, snails, earthworms, moles. And usually you find them in a dark and damp place. You find them in a dark and damp place. You can, since you are at home, you can always Google up and see what you can, uh, with, with the help of your parents' consent, with your parents' consent, please Google and try these exercises. List the plants that you find around your school or maybe you can say around your home since you are not in school. Number two, look around your home for small animals. How many of them can you name? Okay, this list might help you and then you can also try this activity time, the rapid fire. You can read this, find out where these animals live, copy their names. If the animal lives on the land, write L against its name. If it swims in water, write W. If it mostly flies in the air, write A against its name. Sort the animals into sets. So you can try these activities, you can, you can, I'll read out the names for you. Shark, dog, crow, snail, octopus, lion, tadpoles, horse, salmon, eagle, butterfly, elephant, bee, tiger. Okay. Now, also this is also very easy. You can, all, you can write this down in, in your rough copy and you can try this activity by yourself. Trust me, you will really enjoy it. And not just this, you will be engaged in more such worksheets where you will have fun playing with colors and matching the following and more interesting exercises. So, for, I'm, uh, we are finishing this class for today. I hope you have understood the lesson. I hope you had a good time in learning the plants and animals. And if you have any queries, any clarifications, you can always write it down and mail it, mail it back to the level 1 with your names, with your teacher's name, so we can clarify this for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>